Hi, I'm Andy with EcoCha and here we are with batch number 24 of the EcoCha Tea Club. And as we reach the full completion of our second year of the EcoCha Tea Club, we're happy to say that we are still finding batches of tea that you won't find on the market and that are quite special each in their own way. And this month is no exception. This month's batch is a Leaf Hopper High Mountain Oolong. Uh, the term leaf hopper is a direct translation from the uh, local Taiwanese dialect for tea that has been affected by a very small insect called the green leaf hopper. And uh, the effect that this bug has after it feeds on the sap of the new leaf growth is that it uh, results in a very distinct honey essence like quality in the flavor and the aroma of tea and this bug is who is responsible for the making of the famous oriental beauty and the subsequent uh, concubine oolong in central taiwan this batch of tea was sourced from northern taiwan uh, it's actually the first time we've sourced tea from this uh, the most recently developed high mountain tea growing region around Shueba National Park in Shinju County for the most part. Uh, the mountain that is, uh, the name of the mountain that uh, is referred to for uh, tea grown in this area is Guanwu Shan. Uh, this tea garden is around 1,600 meters and this harvest was the second harvest of the year in June of 2017. It's uh, relatively rare to find bug bitten tea at such a high elevation, uh, mainly because the producers of high mountain tea are most interested in having a consistent quality uh, of product. They're not willing to take risks by allowing the green leaf hopper to affect a given crop. They just want to be able to make what they make uh, with consistent quality and sell it at that market price. Bug bitten tea is more commonly found at mid or low elevation uh, where farmers are more willing to take risks in order to produce a uh, specialty type of tea. And bug bitten tea is rapidly in increasing demand um, and is more and more difficult to find as a result. Our friend who we've known for 20 years in Lugu uh, found this batch of tea and raved about it. And when we asked if he might be able to share some of it, he kindly acquiesced and offered us uh, a portion of what he was able to source. And I'll tell you a little secret that I'm not supposed to say yet, but I, I sourced just enough for two batches uh, to be shared with our Eco Cha Tea Club. The first batch I decided would be very useful and informative to our Tea Club members to be able to taste the effect of the green leaf hopper in an unroasted tea in order to taste the original flavor of bug bitten tea. Um, concubine oolong is bug bitten tea that is made in the fashion of Dongding Oolong tea from Lugu, uh, but the leaves have been bug bitten, so they possess this honey-like quality in addition to the already rich and complex character of Dongding Oolong. Oriental Beauty, uh, what might be considered the original bug bitten tea, is processed uh, as a very well oxidized Oolong tea, close to black tea. Uh, so it's up there around 80% oxidation and uh, Oriental Beauty does have the, the aromatic qualities that a black tea will have, but on the palate it has this complexity of flavor, particularly when it has been obviously affected by the leaf hopper. High Mountain Tea, on the other hand, is lightly oxidized and unroasted in its conventional form. If a farmer knows that the crop has been affected by the green leaf hopper, he or she will intentionally allow the leaves to be oxidized more. Uh, it just is a way to bring out the flavor that is uh, 
in the leaf as a result of the green leaf hopper, but has to be kind of uh, coaxed out of the leaf by special processing. And that's one of the reasons why bug bitten tea is relatively rare. Um, there is a risk in the production of it. It's, it's difficult, uh, it's, it's almost impossible to know the final outcome. So the farmer has to use his uh, intuition and experience and expertise uh, in the processing of the tea leaves, uh, observing them at each phase of the processing and determining what needs to be done uh, to what extent. So there's a lot more adjustment involved and no real SOP that can be resorted to or standard processing methods. We feel that this unroasted batch of high mountain oolong tea that has been affected by the green leaf hopper definitely has the uh, the bug bitten effect in its flavor profile and that's why we're inspired to share it as an unroasted tea. We're going to keep the other half of the batch that we sourced and uh, have our friend who is a master tea roaster, uh, professional Dongding Oolong tea maker, roast it for us to what he determines the degree that would be ideal and share that next year, but that's a secret. So let's give this a try. Unroasted leaf hopper, high mountain oolong tea from Guanwu Shan in northern Taiwan. There's just so much more substance to uh, this batch of tea in comparison with your conventional high mountain oolong. Uh, the first sip reminds me of how strong this tea is and as a result I only used seven grams. I'm uh, purposely being a little bit more technical than I normally would with uh, a tea that I'm quite used to brewing because bug bitten tea is a batch specific tea. It's un every batch is unique and you have to get to know each batch for the character that it has. Uh, and this is probably the highest elevation, most uh, the hardiest leaves that I've tasted that have been affected by the green leaf hopper. So my point is, a smaller amount of tea leaves can be used and you need to be more conscious of your brewing time. I just reached the, mm, the edge of being a little too strong, but I'm really glad I did because it really uh, allows me to experience the potential that this tea has. There's a lot to it. It has a bitter undertone. So people that are not fond of bitter should brew this tea lightly. You'll get uh, just as satisfying of a brew because the complexity that comes out of the tea when it is brewed lightly stands in contrast to the stronger brew. There is a more subtle uh, aromatic quality when it's brewed lightly and a more floral, uh, kind of the, the sweet floral aroma that you get from honey, that smell that you get from honey that just reminds you of wildflowers or perhaps whatever the bees had been feeding on in terms of the flower crop. Yeah, the second brew is a little lighter. So much nose. It's almost intoxicating. It's really satisfying. It's, it's just, well, you're just going to have to experience it for yourself because it kind of goes beyond words. Suffice it to say that leaf hopper, High Mountain Oolong Tea is uh, quite a specialty tea in Taiwan, a natural phenomenon combined with the expertise of modern tea processing, offering uh, a type of tea that I think is without question world class. Yeah, dried wildflowers. On the palate, it's a balance of bitter and smooth, very uh, substantial uh, substance in the texture of the tea. We're really happy to be able to share this batch of tea with you, especially since we can share it now as an unroasted tea and uh, next year as a roasted tea, the same batch of tea, the same harvest uh, processing methods. All that will be added is a few roasting sessions to, well, 
we'll let you see how it changes. We don't know the results yet, but in our experience, the difference between unroasted bug bitten tea and roasted is quite different. You wouldn't think they are the same batch of tea. There you have it. Batch number 24, Leaf Hopper High Mountain Oolong Tea from Northern Taiwan, Guan Shan, 1,600 meters elevation, harvested in June of this year. Please share your experience of this tea with us by putting your comments on our blog page, sharing your photos, and even your tasting videos. The Tea Club is for us to share our experiences of tea, and particularly these uh, unique batches that you're not going to be able to go out to the store and buy. Thanks for being with us for all of these two years or any part of them uh, for when you have joined us and please continue to be with us in our third year which will start next month. We'll see you then.